Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new Android TV that I recently picked up on a Black Friday deal. Now this is a real Android TV. I mean, it's a 55 inch. This is the Hisense U7G. I believe they make up to a 75 inch, but this one was going for $650 for Black Friday, and I've been really wanting to get into a 4K 120 hertz either monitor or television, so I finally bit the bullet and picked this one up. And I'm actually really impressed by the performance of the whole Android TV side of things. I mean, the chip they're using in here is actually pretty powerful, and it's more powerful than I'd say 90% of the Android TV boxes on the market right now. I mean, this has nothing on the Nvidia Shield, but when it comes to the cheaper Android TV boxes that you see on Amazon and eBay, this is going to beat it all day long in 4K video performance, native Android gaming, and even emulation performance. Since we have an Android TV here, we do have access to Google Play, and we can go ahead and install our favorite apps as long as they're available on the Android TV version of Google Play. And a lot of great emulators are available, like MooPen64 for N64, we got Redream for Dreamcast, and even PPSSPP for PSP emulation. And we're going to test out all three of those on the TV with its built-in hardware. Got a really basic looking remote here. We've got our Netflix button and a few others that they just keep adding on. It does have voice search functionality or Google Voice built in. And you can also opt to use this over Bluetooth, but it does have infrared built in. Round back, we have four HDMI ports. Two of these support 4K 120. The other two are 4K 60. We've also got USB 3.0. We've got a coaxial cable, a USB 2.0 port, and a combo RCA jack. This does have AC Wi-Fi built in, but we also have gigabit Ethernet right on the back here. And if you're going to do any kind of game streaming on this, I would highly suggest plugging in your Ethernet instead of using Wi-Fi. You're just going to get much better performance. I got to say, overall picture quality on this is absolutely beautiful. It does support HDR10+, and it has Dolby Atmos built in. When it comes to the picture settings, we've got all the basics here. We can dim the backlight. You've also got an automatic light sensor built into the front. So if you want to set that up for nighttime use, it works out really well. Got a ton of picture modes to choose from, like a lot of these newer TVs, vivid, standard, film. I mean, it's really up to you. And we can also apply these settings to the current source, which would be the Android TV portion of everything, or all sources. I'm just going to leave it there. Setting it to all sources, even your HDMI will be applied with these picture settings we have. But we can go into the calibration settings. We've got our color tuner. I mean, all the basics here, so you can get this looking exactly how you want. And I gotta say, out of the box, it's really not that bad set to Vivid. And everything you're gonna see in this video is just set to Vivid. I'm not gonna worry about calibration right now. Move down to sound. Like I mentioned, this does have Dolby Atmos built in, and the speakers on this do put out some really good bass. I was surprised to hear how loud this thing gets. But if you want to add your own speaker system, you can go wired, optical, or you could even go Bluetooth with it. Now, the one main thing I was really interested in seeing is what CPU this has and how much RAM we have. It's a very quick experience here in Android. I haven't noticed any hiccups at all. So what I did was install IDA64, and it turns out this is powered by the MediaTek MT5895. We've also got two gigabytes of RAM behind that. This is a quad-core 1.8 gigahertz ARM CPU, and MediaTek claims that this chip will do 8K 60fps. And when it comes to the GPU, we have the Mali G52 MC2. So the first thing I wanted to do was just check out a little bit of 4K video playback from YouTube. I'm going with this 4K 60 HDR jazz demo from LG. Just give you a look here that we are at 4K. 4K HDR. Stats for Nerds is on screen. And I've tested a few different videos. I only get one drop frame. I mean, this is actually really good and it looks amazing. I know it's not coming across on camera like it does in real life, but this is a really good looking display. I'm super surprised by it. And the wide vine level is L1, so when it comes to Netflix, HBO Go, Hulu, Amazon Prime, you will get that HD content, or UHD content, be it 4K. This TV does have Bluetooth 5.0 built in, so I figured I'd go ahead and try to connect an Xbox controller to it, and it does work out. I just connected it from the settings, and we can actually navigate the full Android operating system here with your Xbox controller. So if you want to play some native Android games with a controller, no problem at all. When it comes to game streaming, it'll detect it, and even emulation. Now, the TV itself only has 8.3 gigabytes of free space to install apps, but we do have that USB 2.0 and USB 3.0 port on the back. 
So I just formatted a 32 gigabyte drive NTFS, plugged it in, and it detected it. This is a great way to store your ROMs if you want to do some retro gaming on this thing. I wanted to go through and test a few native Android games. I'm using that Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. I just picked this up from Google Play. It's working fine, but when it comes down to it, in my opinion, there's not a lot of great games on the Android TV market. There's a few to choose from. Something like this looks really good. Another one that I usually like to test is Real Racing 3. And even this one here works much better than it does on the S905 boxes that I've tested previously on the channel. I mean, we definitely have a more powerful CPU in this TV. Alright, so you know, one of my favorite things to do on Android TVs is emulation, and since we have Google Play, I've gone through and I've installed ReDream for Dreamcast, I've also got Moopin64 plus FZ for N64, and PPSSPP for PSP. First up, we got some Dreamcast using ReDream, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, FPS is up in the top left hand corner, this is running great. I mean, I had a good feeling that ReDream would run well on this hardware. We've got that quad-core 1.8 GHz CPU paired up with that Mali G52 GPU. And when it comes to Dreamcast, I mean, I'm getting great performance here. It's pretty impressive seeing this just run on a TV. I mean, this is natively running on the hardware in the TV. Moving over to some N64 emulation, here's GoldenEye007. By the way, I'm using Moopin64 plus FZ from the Google Play Store. I didn't do any kind of upscaling or anything like that, but yeah, I mean, this is running really, really well. We've got one more N64 game to test, which is a harder one to run, and that's Conker's Bad Fur Day, and surprisingly, it's able to run this game also. I wouldn't mind playing my N64 games on the native hardware inside of this TV. It's not the best emulation that I've seen, but it's not a super powerful unit either. And the final thing I wanted to test here was some PSP emulation using PPSSPP. We'll go with Soul Calibur Broken Destiny first. 2x resolution, no frame skip. We'll load right in. Up in the top right hand corner we have the FPS and it's running at 60. So overall the easier PSP games are going to run well on this at 2 to 3x resolution depending on the game, but I really wanted to test a harder one to emulate and that's going to be Chains of Olympus. And unfortunately with this one, I didn't get great performance. Even with frame skip on, I couldn't get a constant 30 out of it. So yeah, going into this I thought we'd have good luck with this at 60, but unfortunately these harder ones are just too hard to emulate for the hardware in this TV right now. Another thing I wanted to test was some cloud gaming. Unfortunately I couldn't get Xbox Game Pass or Xbox X Cloud working on this, I just couldn't get it side loaded. But GeForce Now is on the Google Play Store, so I loaded up some Cyberpunk 2077. And over Wi-Fi, I was getting a lot of skips, but I think that's just my home internet. Soon as I plugged in Ethernet, I was getting really good performance with this. So yeah, I mean, game streaming, be it Stadia, GeForce Now, or even Steam Link, will work out well on this TV. And I really do wish that I could have got Xbox Game Pass up and running on this, because that's one of my favorite cloud gaming platforms right now, but it just wouldn't load for some reason. But one of the main reasons I picked this TV up for in the first place was for my Xbox Series X. Here's Forza Horizon 5, and this looks so good. I do own a few 4K TVs in the house. I consider them B-class 4K TVs. They're not super expensive. I got an LG IPS downstairs. We've also got a Toshiba, and I can tell you that this looks 10 times better than any of those TVs I have. Now, this is not a $3,000 OLED TV you're still going to see better looking TVs out there. But with this thing coming in at $649, 4K, HDR10+, Dolby Atmos, and a 120Hz refresh rate, I'd say that this is an amazing deal. And the team over at Ratings.com did a review on this a while ago, and when it comes to input latency, it's not that bad for a TV. Now this has nothing on a nice gaming monitor, but those are going to run you around the same price, maybe even a little more, for a 4K 120Hz display. So yeah, I mean, if you can pick one of these up at a $650 price tag, I would definitely go for it if you have devices that can do 4K 60, 4K 120. 
Like I said, the main reason I wanted to pick this up was for the Series X, and I haven't been able to get my hands on a PS5, so as soon as I can get my hands on one of those, I'll be ready with this display. Plus, I wouldn't mind plugging in my gaming PC to this thing at all, so we've got a great picture, 120Hz, 4K, HDR, HDR+, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos... And the processor they're using for the Android TV portion of everything actually works out really well for native Android gaming and like you saw in this video, even emulation on the TV all by itself. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about this, I will leave a few links in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.